Hi everyone, in this tutorial we will see how to texture this stove model using our smart weathering add-on. We will be adding some worn and dirt on top of this PBR setup to boost the weathering that already has. We will use a great complementary add-on called Simple Bake to convert the procedural texturing that smart weathering does into PBR textures that can be used in Eevee and also how to export them to be used in other 3D software like Godot. So the first thing to do is to prepare the model. I just grabbed this stove model from Polyhaven and selected the 4K textures that this model has. And I decided to delete the rig and join all the objects into a single one to keep the things simple. Here we can see how the starting model looks and you can see that it preserves its base shader and it is another great example to show that smart weathering can be added on top of your base shader and you don't need to redo the materials of your project but just using our solution on top of it to boost its weathering effect. So once the model is set I will simply add the smart weathering with the active button and start playing with the different effects. In this case I will add first some worn on it mainly some bubbles in the painted metal part. And then I will start increasing the rust intensity effect to give a more heavily used sensation to the texturing work. And now I will do a simple trick where I will add some stains where the metal parts are exposed. If you want to know a little more about this advanced setup, please take a look at our channel where you will find more info about it. But basically what I've done is to extract the metallic map from the PBR setup to mask where the bubbles and the stains will be appearing. This simple trick will let me have better control where the stains and the bubbles will be applying onto the model. Now what I've done is to simply turn off the worn effect and turn on the dirt one to add some random dirt onto the model and also increase the dirt on the cavities that will be noticeable once I change the dirt cavities type and increase the distance. Once I'm happy with the dirt result, I toggled on the worn effect just to check how the final texturing looks. You can see that texturing this model was very easy to do. It was just a matter of moving some sliders without the need to worry about technical aspects like doing complicated node setups or creating hand painted details. You can see that it is a procedural solution that can be added non-destructively on top of your base shader. Well, we can say that our texturing work is done and we are almost there for baking. We first need to check that our model has proper UVs. If we don't, the baking tool will not work as expected. But in this case, this stove model has its UV correctly set because all the pieces are well laid out and there are no overlapping issues. Now we can say that we are ready to do the PBR bake. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be using the simple bake add-on. It is worth to highlight that we tested this add-on and it works with our solution. Not all the different bakers that are out there are compatible with our solution. Maybe because they can handle no groups or they need a special connections. But we tested this one and it works fantastically with our shader setup. So now let's see how we can bake with this atom. Despite it has different options, we will keep it as simple as possible. We will just add our stove into the bake object. We will choose which maps to bake. We will select then the texture output resolution. In this case, we will be using 4K maps and keep in mind that the higher resolution, the more it will take to bake. Then we will choose to export the bakes and export the mesh. And lastly, we will activate a very handy option, which is doing a copy of the object and applying the bakes. And we will ensure that we use the GPU as our baking device. Then we can choose to do the bake in the foreground or the background. We will choose the foreground. And once we hit bake, it will start baking just like that. That was all the setup that was needed. 
and the baking in this case for these four PBR maps at 4K resolution took about 15 minutes in total. And once it finished, a pop-up message appears saying that the bake is finished. And we can check how the bake went by checking the images created in our destination folder. We can see that the baker did a great job and the textures are correct. And if we check our viewport, as we use the option to create a copy of the object and apply the PBR textures onto it, we can see how this model looks with these new textures. And you can see the difference with the procedural version. And despite having the disadvantages like having a raster image as result or the need to create the UVs or the baking time when you need a high resolution, this method will have some advantages, which are the faster way that it can be computed once it is baked, and that you can use these results in other render engines like Eevee in this case, which can be a great alternative in different visualization scenarios. And also a very important one is that you can now use the different effects that were created with the smart weathering effects in other programs like Unreal Engine or Godot in this case. So if you need that asset into that other program, because you are making a game, you are preparing some asset for virtual reality or augmented reality, or because you just need it like so in your pipeline, this would be the workflow to get that asset into that program. Now, even though we know that Godot can directly handle blend files, we decided to use the FBX export that the simple bake add-on made for us to show a more classical way to use this in other 3D programs. So that was it. We hope that you have fun weathering your object with our smart weathering solution. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, you will be helping us a lot if you like, subscribe, and spread the word. See you in the next video. Saludos.